So contrary to popular belief, people don't have to wear masks to be mysterious. A much more mysterious person might be flying on the same plane as you or someone that looks absolutely normal, but whose death will confound experts for over 70 years. Today we're going to talk about the kinds of people who can be confidently called the most mysterious people in human history. The Somerton Man On December 1st, 1948, the body of an unidentified man was found on Somerton Beach in Adelaide, Australia. When crime scene investigators and other experts decided to study the body, they found that there was almost no information to identify him. His clothes had no tags, he had no documentation or papers on him, and his face was clean-shaved. They couldn't even use dental records to ID him. The man known as Somerton Man had cigarettes, a box of matches, a pack of gum, a comb, a bus ticket, and a train ticket on him. The doctors weren't able to determine the cause of death and the CSIs couldn't determine who he was because they had no leads. The pathologist concluded that his death was not from natural causes and supposed that there may have been poison involved. However, the Somerton man's body had no signs of poisoning. The evidence led nowhere. Sometime later, another mystery surrounding the Somerton man arose. A torn out page from a book with Tamam Shud written on it was found. The book was an extremely rare copy of Omar Khayyam's poetry collection. The only thing written on the paper was Tamam Shud, which means ended or finished, which only complicated the investigation. The Somerton man has not been identified yet 70 years later. No one has been successful. This is considered one of the most peculiar mysteries in the history of Australia. Dan Cooper. On November 24th, 1971, a man bought a plane ticket from Portland to Seattle under the name Dan Cooper. He had a black briefcase with him. Five minutes after taking off, Cooper gave one of the flight attendants a piece of paper saying his case had a bomb in it. The flight attendant next to him confirmed that when she asked to open it. Cooper said he was hijacking the plane and demanded $200,000 in $20 bills, two sets of parachutes, and a fuel truck in Seattle. The flight attendant told the pilots, and they told the traffic control, and landed in Seattle for refueling. Cooper asked them to turn the lights off so he couldn't be targeted by snipers. His demands were met. He was given the money in parachutes, then he freed all the passengers with only himself, the flight attendants, and pilots on board. Then, the plane took off again. About 40 minutes later, Cooper told everyone on board to go to the cockpit and open the emergency door himself. He jumped out with his money over Washington State. The rest is a mystery. Despite the number of witnesses, the sketches, and efforts by law enforcement, Dan Cooper hasn't been found in for almost 40 years. In 1980, a pack of discolored and ripped $20 bills that matched the ones Cooper got in 1971 were found in the Columbia River in Washington State. This discovery led people to suppose that Cooper died when he landed in the river. However, a body or any other clues were never found. Cooper is still one of the most mysterious people in history. Now, if you ask any American about the biggest mystery in the 20th century America, they'll probably answer with the assassination of JFK. It's a truly terrible event that happened in 1963 and became one of the most mysterious events for the U.S. and for human history altogether. It's not clear if Lee Harvey Oswald really killed him or if the Secret Service were involved. Another oddity is the babushka lady. A woman who can be seen in several pictures taken on that fateful day in Dallas can be seen. She's called babushka lady because she wore a headscarf. One picture clearly shows her standing opposite the motorcade holding a camera. Many people are sure that she took pictures of the passing motorcade, but had a different lens on when the president was shot. 
The FBI tried to find Babushka Lady and at least identify her, but were unsuccessful. The Babushka Lady could have contacted them and presented her material, and she may have been told not to tell anyone anything, but these are just guesses. We still don't know who this woman was and what role she played in the horrible assassination. Kaspar Hauser. On May 26, 1828, a strange man was noticed on one of Nuremberg streets. He couldn't explain who he was and answered every question with, I don't know. All he said was that he wanted to be a cavalryman like his father. When he was taken to the police, he was able to write his name, Kaspar Hauser. He couldn't provide any other information. When they searched Kaspar, they found an envelope with two notes. The first was written by his tutor saying that Hauser was given to him to be raised by an unknown woman in 1812 and had been kept in an underground cell, not having taken a single step outside. The unknown man wrote that Kaspar dreamed of becoming a cavalryman. The second note was possibly written by Kaspar's mother before leaving him. She wrote that his father was dead and she was a poor girl who couldn't raise a child. She asked the future tutor to raise the boy and to send him to the 6th Light Cavalry Regiment when he was 18 where his father served. The results of Hauser's long imprisonment were clearly felt. He only ate black bread and water called all people boys and all animals horses. His only toy was probably a horse. But the young man grew fairly quickly and mastered new languages and skills. He had several tutors and each of them responsibly raised the young boy. Unfortunately, nothing clear was ever learned about Hauser. In 1833, he was murdered by an unknown man. Even more experts studying Kaspar couldn't determine who he really was or who his parents were. monster with 21 faces. In May 1984, the Japanese food company called Izaki Glico ran into a problem. Its president, Katsushita Izaki, was kidnapped from his own home and kept in an abandoned warehouse for some time before he escaped. A little later, a letter arrived at the company that said their products were poisoned with cyanide and people would soon die if all their products weren't taken out the shelves. This cost the company $21 million, and 450 people lost their jobs. The letter's author was an unidentified group of people calling themselves the Monster with 21 Faces. They sent the letter to the police, who couldn't find them even with hints. Another letter said that they forgave the Izaki Galico Corporation, and everything would be over, but it wasn't yet. The monster with 21 faces wasn't satisfied harassing one large company and switched their target to other food companies. The group repeated their actions. They threatened to poison the food and even demanded money this time. During an unsuccessful money exchange operation, police officers ran after the suspect, but he was quite athletic and escaped. Several days later, the monster with 21 faces was heard from for the last time. A letter from them was published in the newspaper saying they were laughing at all the police and the chief who killed himself from the shame. After this letter, the monster with 21 faces disappeared forever. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave us a like and a comment and maybe uh, some theories of all these mysteries you just heard about today. And we'll talk to you again next time.